Welcome to Roller Girls Alaska. This is a nightmare on Eakin Street for a Halloween celebration of roller derby action happening in Juneau, Alaska. The season opener, season four. This is the first bout. It's going to be a mashup bout. We've got international competition here happening, international rosters happening here in Juneau, and we're glad you're joining us here on 360 North. Good evening, everyone. I'm in decline, and with me... Money Honey. Is Money Honey. Glad to be back. Back in the broadcast booth with us. We're so glad to have you back, Money Honey. Well, last uh, game of last season, I was actually up in the uh, crow's nest there with Sarah Yu in the uh, hashtag AK Derby chat. It's true. You know, I could barely stand it. (laughs) That's just a joke. That's bear humor. Is this going to be all night? It's a little grisly. I know. (laughs) Oh, stop it. It's like we're polar opposites. Oh, no. I'm going to stop now with the bear humor. We're dressed up for Halloween. We're having fun, and the action's going to be amazing here tonight. As we said, we've got a mashup of international talent, Yukon Roller Girls, also Roller Girls coming down from Wasilla as the Roller Derby explosion is happening across Alaska. And Boomtown. Juno Roller Durs, the Boomtown Roller Girls, and, uh, and Juno is there still in the forefront of uh, helping make that explosion happen, and we're excited about it. And we're going to get to the player intros here in just a second, as in just a moment here, the uh, Roller Girls are about to come on to the floor. So here this they is come right now. Season 4 opener. We, yeah, the Season 4 opener. We're excited about the Season 4 opener, I'm right? I'm really excited about it. It's going to be amazing. Here they come. Without further ado, here comes uh, the Body Snatchers. The Body Snatchers, an international team here with Wasilla Roller Girls, Yukon Roller Girls, and Juno Roller Girls. And number one, we're going to say hello to the Roland Marvel from Juno Roller Girls is coming out first here. There's Roland Marvel. And coming around next is going to be Battle Jacks. One, 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 nine, Battle Jacks. She's a smooth looking uh, roller uh, derby player there. Coming up next, Scara Unitely. Juno's own Scara Unitely. Fatty Duke is coming up next, also a stalwart here of the Juno Roller Girls. She's been in it from the beginning. She will sometimes take a jammer position, but she's incredibly strong as a blocker. Next, Roberta Bondage is coming up next. She is part of our international pack of roller girls here. She's from the Yukon Roller Girls. That's Roberta Bondage, number 24. And now Titan Young, she is number 25. And that is from the Juno Roller Girls, Titan Young. Now, we've got the captain coming up next, which is Catapult Kim. It's so great to see Catapult She's Kim. She's back. She Money wore honey. stripes last uh, last season for a little bit. She was wearing stripes. She had a baby. She got back into it now. And she's back in there. Such a dynamic and powerful skater. Then, April Mayhem. You're going to be seeing a lot of her tonight. One of the best jammers that Juno's got. An unorthodox, amazing style and incredibly effective. She's got that smile going the entire time. You're going to get used to that. And next from Yukon Roller Girls, she don't give a honey badger. Don't give a what? She don't give a, it's honey badger coming up next on Juno Roller, from Yukon Roller Girls. On the bench tonight, Peach Clobber, one of the premier roller girls. She's on the bench tonight. Then also Wild Bird is the bench manager tonight. And bench runner. And down the bench by runner the bench. is going to be Painbow Smash. Juno Roller Girls. She's over there on the court. She's over there in the corner. There she is. Painbow Smash. Letting people know. She's in the his age. Up next, we're going to have the red team. That's going to be Team Wolfpack. Take it away, Money Honey. Let's see what this team's got to show us here. Looks like they're coming. Oh, new theme song coming up right now. It's all about the theme songs here from the intros, right? Do you hear it? Off in the distance, I think I hear a wolf. Oh, they're coming. 
coming out with the wolf call. That is, the, that is my predator enemy of the bear. I don't know if I like this. Oh, they look mean tonight. They look They're hungry. They look mean. They, they look hungry. They do. Let's see who we got. We're going to see pull up the roster for uh, Red Team Wolf Pack. We got yeah. captain of the Wolf Pack, number 11, Just Julie. She is Juno Roller Girls, been there from the beginning. That's not the last time we'll hear that number tonight. Up next, we have Kylie Wyote. This is uh, number C4. Kylie actually skates with us, but she has transplanted to Rat City. We're, to, we're glad to have her back. Gone to Seattle, yeah. That's right. Up next is 181 Couch. This is from Yukon Roller Girls, one of our international players. After Couch, we have number 22, Skatey Bright with Juno Roller Girls. Always a pleasure to watch her skate. I'm looking forward to this. Skatey Bright's an amazing blocker, especially. She specializes in that. Up next, we have 314, Knockham's Razor. She is from Boomtown, Boomtown Derby Dames, representing. Number 46, Hawk Block from Juno Roller Girls. Number 574, Chuckles Norris from Boomtown Derby Dames. Here comes Verta Breaker. Verta Breaker is 666, well known Juno Roller Girls. Number 79, Bonanza Babe. I have seen her skate with Yukon against Juno. I'm looking forward to seeing some more of this action tonight. Always a solid skater for Juno Roller Girls. Before you, Kim Bustable. Kim Bustable, one of the best jammers Juno's got. Bench coaching tonight for Wolfpack is T. It's up in the center of the track. We also have bench manager, Bitter Glitter. <laughs> oh, and my favorite bench runner, Bruiser Blue. Bruiser so that's Blue. Wolfpack against the body snatchers. It's a good one. It's a Halloween matchup. You get the wolf pack, body snatchers. Are you, do you, have you seen a favorite? Are you are you rooting for anybody yet? Uh, no, I mean, I th what I think, so I know the Juno Roller Girls best, of course, and to me, the talent is evenly spread between the both so. teams for the Juno Roller Girls. For We're sure. coming up next with the national anthem, which is going to be really exciting here. We've got the Canadian national anthem coming up first. Debra Crapo is going to be singing it, and then it's going to be the American National Anthem. We will listen Respectfully. as it happens now.
national anthem sung by Deborah Crapo. Thanks so much to Deborah. If you're tuning in and want to share your thoughts tonight, make sure you check in on 360north.org. And also, uh, you can go to hashtag AKDerby. That's a great place to share your thoughts. To so get in on the chat, we've got T Rex upstairs answering the chat. She's up there with uh, Sarah Yu, that they're, they're going to be together in there manning the chat. So that's going to be amazing to. You know, if you've got questions, if you have ask, if you want to ask questions about the rules, something controversial happens during the match, we can figure that out as well. Right now, we're going to go to another ceremony that's happening in the mid rink here, which is going to be the uh, retirement of two Junior Roller Girls Derbies. So we're going to turn over to the house announcers for that. Her number is Cat Five. She has moved to Montana, and the second skater today. Although you see her here, she is skating with us. Kylie Wyote, number C4. She has recently moved to Seattle and will be skating with the Rat City Roller Girls in Seattle. So thank you so much for everything that you've done. We really appreciate it. Let's give them a round of a hand, please. All right, thank you, T. And the skaters are going to go back and they're going to get well, their gear it. checked by our All right, so referees. the equipment check's going to happen now as well. And uh, thanks so much. That's a, that's a great thing. I'm sure you, as being in so long involved with the Juno Roller Girls here, it's great to see retirement. That's a huge respect. Retirements of jerseys happening now. I mean, yeah. it's a huge amount of respect and also it just means that. Boy, this thing has been going on now for this is the fourth season. Here we go. People are uh, moving on and also being moving respected up. and moving up. That's right, Rat City. That's big, big well, time. Well, shout out to Tuffy Bergoon. I yeah. know she is watching in, in Montana right awesome. now. Yeah, very cool stuff. All right, well, we're going to get to the match here. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the rules, we'll go through them real quick here maybe a little bit, which is just are you, you're looking at me like maybe you're a little unfamiliar. No. We're both fairly familiar we, with the rules. We've got this here. down. Actually, most of the viewers, I think, are getting pretty close. Yeah. Roller Derby's been pretty big. I mean, we have some basic parts of the, the game. We're going around in an oval track. We have two skaters that are scoring skaters. So that's uh, what I would say as a novice. I always watch the two jammers. That's right. You watch the jammers, you can see how the scoring's happening. That's right. The game within a game that's really fascinating to watch are the blockers and what's happening with the blockers. The what's action happening. happens in the pack. It happens in the pack. The right. jammers are cool to watch and you can keep track of what's happening with the score. Of course, as it goes through, we will let you know what's happening with the score as well. Score right now is zero to zero. Jams can be up to two minutes long, but the lead jammer gets to call the jam anytime they want by bumping their hips a couple of times. When you see them do that, that means the jam is over. Scoring has stopped at that moment when and they bump the jam. Reset for a new and jam. And they reset for a new jam. But all of this cannot happen without the skating officials and the non-skating officials. We're talking about the folks in the stripes and the folks on the scoreboard. The, the folks in the center in the pink, those are our non-skating yeah. officials. They're going to be the ones that kind of direct us and tell us what's going on with the game as well. well. Here comes the first jam. First jam. Chicken Hawk is the lead official for tonight, and the first jam coming up, we got Kim Bustable, it looks like. Is that right? I got that right, Kim Bustable, uh, for the, uh, the Wolfpack. Wolf pack. Actually, it looks like we've got uh, April Mayhem for Body Snatchers on the white, and we have... Up on the front, just she's coming around right below us. That's Kim. That's Kim Bustable for the that Wolfpack is Kim coming Bustable. around. I think I had that right. You did. You Absolutely. did. Absolutely. But look at April Mayhem being caught back now. Now this is an interesting situation. April Mayhem is used to getting to that pack quickly, typically. Hey, Kim, Kim Bustable, Bustable coming around for her scoring run right there, and here she comes. She's calling it right there, and she got five. Five right. points right off the bat, five to zero. A great first run from Kim Bustable, and we're gonna see that all night long. Kim well, Bustable, not just fast and athletic, but smart. Knows very what she's much. Doing. Yeah. Uh, well, the strategy that has developed over the last four years for the Juno Roller Girls has just been, I mean, leaps and bounds from season one stumbling and tripping all around. <laughs> this is actual strategy, actual derby tonight. And it's getting up there. Now they're, as you, as you were telling me before the match, they're now qualified as a, a WFTDA member, so they'll be in national and international rankings as they do these uh, matches, and that's an exciting new development for yep. the General Roller. Girls. This match is a local back, uh, is a local matchup with international guest skaters, but they will play against competitive WFTDA leagues 
uh, elsewhere, including Anchorage, including Fa Fairbanks. And it's our first time to check out Jean-Claude Hot Dam, who was fighting through that pack, and when she did, uh, was called for cutting outside a little bit there and is now in the sin bin. So we've got, right now, Chuckles coming through here as a jammer, but not the lead jammer. And so now she's checking with her bench to see what sort of strategy to employ. Yep, Major P. Rick, he's a, a jam ref for Chuckles there, and uh, he was indicating that she is not Lee Jammer, which means she just has to keep going until uh, Hot Damn comes out of the box. Oh, they're and switching the panty, though, here. They're switching the panty. Looks like they're switching the panty over to Skatey Bright. She's got the she's got the Jammer panty, it and is she's going to come through there for Skatey Bright. This is exciting to see a, lead, a Jammer switch the panty. Onto her head. That's that star on it. That's called the panty that's on the helmet. Now, when she was uh, switching up the panty, we were watching her. Hot Damn actually came back into uh, the pack and has been kind of re been recycled a few times already and working her way through. So right now, I still have Skatey Bright on her first lap through, where at our second lap through, whereas Hot Dam is still on her first lap through. That is correct. Now Hot Dam has broken out, and you would, might want to look and see if Skatey Bright scored some points there, and she might call it here as Hot Dam starts coming around for a scoring run. She's going to look and see if she can we have score a pretty, some points. We have a pretty effective block with the white team, the uh, body snatchers, as they're called. They are keeping Skatey Bright uh, back and within pack. Uh, to give them a pack advantage to keep the score down. And what I was saying there was actually incorrect. Skating Bright was not the lead jammer, so she was the one who was going to not be able to call it. We're going to have a replay here. Yeah, here's that pileup that's coming up in the front there. They pile up around the front there. You can see the lead jammer or the jammer for the, the wolf pack go out, and Hot Dam comes around. She hits the ground, but then when she comes back around, that's where they said she had cut the track, and uh, that's a major penalty. That means a little bit of time in the sin bin as right. we head into jam number three. We All have, right. uh, looks like Vertebraker, number 666, is uh, jamming for, wolf for Wolfpack. Woo! Ha! Oh, that was some fast action happening there. Jammer as we've got Roland Marvel coming around. Yeah, for the Body Snatchers, she is now lead jammer for the Body Snatchers. A lot of speed there, Money Honey. For the jammers, yep. For the blockers, they've got to slow it down a little bit and make sure that they are set with their strategy of a wall or uh, whatever else they've decided they're going to do. So sometimes you'll see the pack actually stop and wait for the action to come to them. So Roland Marvel came around. Passed, came around just barely past that wall, got a score of two, and called it immediately. That's right. It looks like Mayhem is up on the jammer line against Kim Bustable again. Mayhem is in white, body snatchers, Kim Bustable, red, Wolfpack. Early lead for Wolfpack right now of 10 to 3. Early, early scoring here. These scores will get up much higher as we go on through the bout here. Mayhem has a very specific way she pushes through the pack. She's got these little bunny hops right on her toe stop, and it works almost every time. Great example of it. As Just as you were saying it, right on cue, she did that bunny hop step, especially on the inside of the track. She loves playing that inside curve of the trap to make her pass. And look, she's going to do it again right there. Oh, she there just she goes. did it again and called it. Before Kim Bustle could come back around for her initial or for her scoring pass, Mayhem's ready to go. Here comes that bunny hop coming up. I'll tell you, you just, she just does it. This is what she loves to do, right? Dup, bup, and one, two, bup, three, and bup, she is out through. and in the straightaway. And there she goes. And she's a fast skater once she gets some open track in front of her. In the replay, it's really great to see because she looks back, checks out what's going on with the uh, other jammer, and is like, eh, smile on my face, let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. I feel good. All right, coming up next, we've got uh, one of the uh, 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 international, I think, uh, skaters here. This is uh, Chuckles coming through. And on the other side, we've got uh, Fatty Dukes coming through uh, for the Body Snatchers. And Fatty Dukes and up against a solid wall of Bonanza Babe Center. and Just Julie. And she is down and back in the pack. Yeah, Just Julie set her down. Fatty Dukes down again, getting back up here. Meanwhile, Chuckles trying to work the inside. Fatty Dukes was caught for 
These blockers are, I mean, this is just the first game of the season and they are established. They have got their team set, they are communicating. I'm definitely happy to see an opening season like this for Junior Roller Girls and for the International Boomtown yeah, and Yeah, there's UConn. been some off-season practicing for sure. Now we've got a situation here where a lead jammer is on the track without the other jammer there. So it's just sort of free points right now. They'll keep right. this jam going as long as they possibly can because there's no uh, potential for the other team to score points. Yep. And I would say actually, it, one thing to say about that as we look at the replay here, and Fatty Deuce going down hard here in just a moment. Just Julie is gonna level her. That's right, that is a very legal solid hit, That's I think. That's a solid hit. You know, I tell you, just Julie, you just don't wanna run into her that way. She is not gonna go down, and you will end up on your backside. They called that jam early, as I was saying earlier, that they want to keep it going, but they want to keep it going with their strongest jammer. So they've That's right. made the switch here to change up to Kim Bustable, who can score a lot of points in a hurry while the other jammer is now, off. Now, Fatty, uh, Fatty Duke had been in the box, and so after the jam started, she was released. So this is her second jam in a row that she's uh, as a... Um, yeah, body snatchers a, there. Body snatchers there were claiming that Kim Bustable had uh, done a little bit of a chop up to the chin with their elbow. We'll see uh, what happens there, but uh, body snatchers were not exactly happy with uh, the pass through there for uh, Kim Bustable. Very nice evasive move that Kim Bustable just made right at the end yeah. before calling off. That was Roberta Bondage there, one of the Yukon Roller Girls. Took exception to uh, Kim Bustable coming through and uh, maybe giving her a little bit of a chop in the chin on the way through. Hey, that's just to take this one with you is a little bit of that from Kim Bustable. <laughs> All right, Wolfpack is uh, so far the one really scoring the points here. Uh, you know, I haven't even it's paid attention to the score. In control, <laughs> but sort of in control of the match so far, I'd say Wolfpack is sort of dictating the tempo and dictating the style of play so far as they've uh, gone through here. 23 to eight is the you score a right really now. Really good wall up there holding back the red team or Wolfpack's uh, jammer. In the meantime, we have Roland Marvel coming around as lead jammer. Here she comes, she's sort of sizing up what's happening. Meanwhile, Razor has been called off for a major. She's gonna spend some time in the sin bin. We've got the lead jammer right now coming through with uh, the potential nice. to score a lot of points here if they can get through that wall. Oh, Kylie Wyote is C4. She uh, is pulled out for Wolfpack and heading to the box to cool it down just a little bit. So you've got a situation here where one of the main blockers and the jammer for the Wolfpack is now on the bench. We're going to look at the replay here. What happened for uh, oh, Kylie Wyote got pulled out. Oh, nope. That looks like it's just Roland Marvel coming around. Roland Marvel making some tracks there and now able to call the jam. So it's a shorthanded jam right now for Power the Wolfpack. Jam. Be uh, benefit for body snatchers. Yeah, body snatchers looking to score some points here, maybe make up some lost ground. April Mayhem is jamming for body snatchers. And, and there pop, she pop, goes. Pop, she's and through. there she is. <laughs> she's got that style. And she's, she's, she's a powerhouse jammer for Junior Roller Girls in general, but uh, I think she's definitely giving some uh, run for the money for Wolfpack. There she's through. This, that's her scoring run. She got five points right there. Meanwhile, the jammer now has come back on for the Wolfpack. And this is Razor. Oh, she's just took having a can a opener from uh, Fatty Duke. Fatty Duke. And now they're going for a panty toss. Looks like Kim Bustable's got the uh, jammer panty in her hand. Helmet. And it's on, and she is now eligible to score. But you've got April Mayhem right on her tail. And we'll see, and April Mayhem calls it right there. So actually, that was exactly what the body snatchers needed, a power jam in a situation where they had been behind for a while. Now the Wolf Pack 23, but the body snatchers making up 10 points in that one jam alone. One jam. The score differential can change uh, pretty quickly, like a blink of an eye. Like, I'm not paying attention, whoa. And it might happen right here with Jean-Claude Hot Dam as the jammer, this one a dynamic, powerful skater. She's jamming for white uh, jersey wolf uh, body snatchers and up Wolfpack, against yeah. Meanwhile, has uh, the uh, uh, Chuckles Norris. So Chuckles is out there for the uh, 
for the Wolfpack. She's from Boontown, from Wasilla. And so a little bit of an unknown quantity for some of these uh, uh, Juno Roller Girls skaters as well. You know, the uh, Juno Roller Girls have traveled quite a bit and have skated pretty well with uh, all kinds of members of the other teams in Alaska and internationally. So it seems like they can come together as a team pretty easily. And that looks like that's what we've got right now with a Body Snatchers Wolfpack score of 22 to 23. John claude Hot Dam coming through this pack right now. Chuckles was the lead jammer there. She called it before Jean-Claude could score. And uh, so right now it looks like we've got a score of, oh, the Body Snatchers surge into the lead. No, they don't. It's 25-26 with Body Snatchers just one point behind. That's how quickly it can turn. They were well behind just three jams ago. Now they've caught back up. It's I mean, this is going to be a great game match. if we see this the whole time because we're only 17, just about 17, 18 minutes into the first uh, period, and we're already seeing trade-offs on the score. This is great. There we go with another one coming through here. Oh, that's that's some crushing action happening in there right now. A lot Roland of upper Marvel body trying impact. to come around. And both. Vertebreaker in the back. So Roland Marvel and Vertebreaker both being held up by the walls. Roland Marvel having a hard time here. She's kind of remind me of a pinball, just yeah. bouncing back and forth against those walls. Meanwhile, Just Julie tried not to let her go through, but eventually Roland Marvel did make it through. Had a couple of calls there. Vertebreaker still in the back there, trying to get through. Got a little push there from Hawk Block, getting her through. But looks like she's off the track. to looks the, like she's the track. That's right, she's off to the uh, Aurora Project Simbin. All right, meanwhile, here comes Roland Marvel coming through as the only jammer left in this jam. Coming through, trying to score some points, badly needed points by the Body Snatchers, who, however, are now in the lead by four points. 30 to 26 is the score right now with the Body Snatchers having seized back the lead from the Wolfpack after being behind since the beginning of this bout. All right, coming through now. Got a bit of a hold up here on the wall as uh, Roland Marvel is trying to get through that wall of the Wolfpack. Just Julie managing that wall masterfully, I think, right? I, you know, I think the, the walls are managing the jammer, jammers masterfully. So we've got this coming, coming through here and uh, you can see this pinball effect as you were saying. Back and forth, yep. Roland Marvel trying to get through, but that wall it's basically impenetrable there. there. And then right here, she managed to get around on the inside, right there. And that's where she moves around. And that's the persistence that jammers need to be doing, you know, when they're up against a wall that's going to constantly recycle them back and put them back. A push key. them back, push them back, you keep pushing forward. Yeah, a key jam there as Body Snatchers now up by eight points over the Wolf Pack. And we'll see if they can continue that scoring here as we go into the next jam. We've got both jammers having oh, to go back and kind of start Kim over. Oh, Catapult Kim on as a jammer for the Body Snatchers. This is a, a good turn. I love seeing Catapult Jam. She is a powerful, fast skater with a lot of ability, a lot of motion to Looks like we have Chuckles uh, jamming, working her way through the wall over there with another panty toss by Chuckles to just Julie. So Just Julie is now putting on the helmet panty and she will become jammer for Wolfpack. Meanwhile, Catapult Kim, the jammer for the Body Snatchers, is in the sin bin. So this is an opportunity for the Wolfpack to catch right back up. Just Julie coming around, looking to the outside, falls to the outside of the track. Kind of a domino effect there. Meanwhile, Just Julie coming around and she's okay. Comes through with five points. That's exactly what the Wolfpack needed right now. Looks like we've got some com communication right below the uh, announcer table for us right here, listening to uh, Cranberry Crush, making sure that a couple of those skaters heard their oh, numbers just, called. Just Julie is fast and powerful. It's a great combination for not just blocking, but as she's showing, also for a jammer. I think the versatility of Just Julie is really effective because she can Oh, that is a hit. She can anticipate those jammers, well, or those up. blockers. You could kind of see that one coming up a mile away. Fatty Duke and uh, Jean-Claude Hot Dam were communicating with each other. Yeah. Fatty Duke was pushed out by Hot Dam, by, uh, by, by uh, Hot Dam pushed out by Fatty Duke at the last minute, just as uh, Just Julie's coming around like a ton of bricks, and she hit her like a ton of bricks too. We'll see that. And right they all go down. Minute. 
and they all went down. The whole wall went down. And that's the end of this jam. This jam times out at the full two minutes. And uh, we'll see if that replay comes up. Body Snatchers now uh, down by two points over Wolfpack. Wolfpack surging ahead there. And that's kind of exactly what they needed. Just Julie, Julie doing exactly what needed to happen for the Wolfpack. I and think uh, we, give, we need to give a lot of credit there to uh, the bench managers as well. I mean, they're helping determine the lineups. They're seeing some action that might need to, you know, be answered against. And, and, yeah, and so they're was, making those changes in real time. So, and I mean, that that's, was the result. That panty switch so that she became a jammer was the result. That's why that uh, point differential happen. Body Snatchers now up by 2, 38 to 36. We have Mayhem for Body Snatchers lead jammer again. She's going to slide right back on her own wall. Did a little jump there in the turn. And she is back again at the back of the pack. Just Julie, meanwhile, fights through that wall and comes through. She comes off of the sin bin and comes back in and starts scoring points. Meanwhile, Ooh, April right Mayhem. Through. April Mayhem on that first one was absolutely upended as she really tried to do a little bit of an aerial display coming through there. Uh, though in the meantime, just Julie comes around, just slides right by. April Mayhem calls it. And here's that replay we're talking about here as April Mayhem comes through with a lot of speed, trying to cut and through. Nice little apex trying to jump. jump it and just didn't quite <laughs> made it. She made the jump, but a little too much speed there, and then had to cut all the way back. And that's what put her behind there. Although she ended up scoring points, so 47-40 now for the Wolfpack. Speed is her weapon. Speed is one of her main weapons for April Mayhem as we have a timeout here. Yep, Wolfpack has asked for a team timeout. So that is uh, co-captain T on the bench. So they, maybe they want to huddle up, recenter. Maybe give a little bit of a rest. It's the first uh, bout after all, the first game of the uh, of the season. So conditioning is going to be probably an issue a little bit here as they work into into uh, into oh, game shape. Oh, I think shape. so. I yeah. mean, we spent the whole summer hiking and you know taking time off and right. traveling, and some of them moving. So yeah, I mean, they're coming back in for the season opener. I'm not worried. Their athleticism is awesome. So. All right, coming up next here, we've got that timeout. It's just ending right now. We're going to set up for the next jam here as we've got just about 12 minutes left in this uh, first half of the action here at Centennial Hall. It's the nightmare on Egan Street as the Wolfpack faces off against the Body Snatchers. It's a mashup of teams. You've got Yukon Roller Girls, Wasilla Roller Girls, well, and Boomtown. Juno Roller Girls. Boomtown. Boomtown Roller Boomtown. Girls. And uh, Juno Roller Girls all combining here for the action that we're seeing. So far, very evenly matched, 47-40 with the Body Snatchers right now in the lead. It has seesawed a little bit here, and we'll see what happens as this next we jam starts. We have Roll and Marvel again up for Body Snatchers uh, as a jammer, and then we also have uh, not seeing Kim Bustable for uh, Wolfpack. It looks like we've got a good setup of blockers for Body Snatchers, too. We've got uh, Scara Unitely, Fatty Duke, Catapult Kim. Who else we got in there? Titan Young as the blockers for Body Snatchers. Kim Bustable setting through there that uh, that pack of uh, blockers, and she just scored five points with that. Kylie Wyote just around. did an oh. effective clearing of the uh, Body Snatchers blockers, and then they quickly <laughs> reformed. They did reform as, the, as Kim then took care of Combustible was sent right off the track. The uh, jammer for Body Snatchers is heading back onto the track. And that is Roland Marvel. She'll be setting up there at the back of the pack. Roland Marvel now coming through. And Combustible's going to call it before she can, before Roland Marvel can score any points there. Well, that was quite a hit that Combustible took there. We'll see what happens here as she comes back around. And as you were saying, they were not formed well and they were able to communicate quickly. Yep. Reform right here. And Combustible. Felt the reformation. 
I love replay. Yes. Replay. 360 <laughs> replay is awesome. There you go as she just gets sprawled out. But, you know, quickly recovers. And look at that. Immediately up, scoring points. And that's the strength of Combustible. It's very fast, light on her feet, and tough. I mean, absolutely tough as nails out there. All right, we've got a couple of uh, skaters in the sit bin as this next jam starts. So it's the jam actually uh, looks they, a little bit smaller. Well, Body Snatchers is now called a team timeout. There seems to be some discussion going on between Peach Clobber and uh, Just Julius, the captains, co-captains, along with uh, Head, Ref, Chicken Hawk. We've got a bit of an effort of a wave happening here in the audience. It looks a little bit more like kind of a just choppiness right now, but we'll see if a wave develops. Oh, just like the water out in Gasno Channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It's just a little choppy. <laughs> a little choppy. All right. Meanwhile, the next jam is about to form here. We've got uh, Jean-Claude Hot Dam going up here against the Yukon, sorry, Boomtown Derby Dames, Chuckles Norris. Chuckles is uh, spending a lot of time on the jammer line. That's really good. I'm glad to see that they're getting uh, good exposure for uh, skating and skating in Juno. I mean, they come down and they get to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, she's got a lot of skills, man. Skills to pay the bills as she goes right down. Battle Jacks just took. Yeah. Got that shoulder right up in there. That's a little bit of Boomtown going back after each other there. That's. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, Chuckles going up against uh, Battle Jacks. They've seen a lot of action together. Pretty much looks like uh, Battle Jacks was getting through there, getting the points, calling it off. Let's We're check out this hit here as we see this coming through here. <laughs> this is the two Wasilla girls who know each other right there. And yeah. Down and uh, up. She didn't even look back. She's like, I'm she's like, gonna I didn't brush feel it. it off. Yep. I didn't feel it. Shake Next it up. Next time I come through, why don't you hit me? That's what she said. All right. Coming up next, we got a little bit more of the April Mayhem action. We got Battle Jacks up on the jammer line, along, uh, up against Mayhem. And Mayhem is through immediately. That is just her style. You know, she loves that quick break through the uh, through the line. It's Razor going up against her there on the jammer line. Oh, is it line. Razor? Yep. I'm sorry, my bad. It is Razor, but she's coming around through quickly. Razor's uh, coming around to that back wall from the Body Snatchers, and they're holding her back just a little bit, just enough. Mayhem's going to come back around and probably uh, yeah. call it or score it. We'll see. Mayhem's already scored four. She's coming back around to see if she can score a few more. Well, Razor answered that with four, so we'll see where we go with the score at the end of this jam. And she's through. She's through with five, four points there on that pass through. So April Mayhem gets four more. Right now it's at 61-51, Body Snatchers and the Wolfpack with the Wolfpack ahead now, 61-55. Catapult Kim is blocking uh, against Razor, just would not give up. She was just stuck on her like glue. April Mayhem coming back around on the inside track one more time for another scoring run here. Meantime, while the jammers are coming around the track, the uh, blockers are setting themselves up for that next uh, interaction with them and deciding what strategy they're going to go with. Two, a two wall and somebody else to catch up. The crowd here is loving April Mayhem coming through, one of the crowd favorites. Someone that they've uh, seen score a lot of points for Junior Roller Girls through the last couple of years. Now well, Mayhem's going face to face with Just oh, Julie. That's Just a good Julie says, You may be a favorite, but I'm going <laughs> to slow you down. <laughs> But not for long, I tell you, she is such a skilled skater, April Mayhem, and she loves feeding off that crowd. Here she comes. And she calls, it's called there with uh, just, uh, I think that's the full, that was a full jam there, so it went out with a full jam, the full two minutes. I'm so, waiting to see what the final score is up here. Uh, right now, yeah, right now the scoreboard is saying 65-64, but the body snatcher scored a little bit more on that, so coming back up to 69-65 there with body snatchers in the lead. And here we go with April Mayhem coming around on that inside track, as you see. She is a flying. She loves to come through, loves feeding off that energy of the crowd, and you can see it in that smile as she comes around. Great form by April Mayhem there. Here comes Combustible coming through as the jammer. She just went through that wall like it wasn't even there. Coming up next. Last sight of the uh, 
the jammer for the body well, snatchers. Rolling Marvel, Rolling Marvel trying to get through for the body snatchers. Meanwhile, Kim Bustable heads outside, takes out a ref. That was Cranberry through, Crush. Came through with a lot of speed. Cranberry Crush took the bad end of that. Meanwhile, here we go with Roland Marvel still trying to get through that first wall. And she does finally get through. Well, she, you know, she, it, she, the uh, wolf pack had to let her go. This pack they were split, split up too far apart. And yeah. ref gave an indication, indication that uh, do not engage. So there it was. She was able to stretch that pack out enough to where they could no longer engage. And that's definitely a strategy. Um, when we all like to see the skaters skating, and so as they're doing this, the pass, the uh, body snatchers are backing up, and they're, you know, trying to basically push the rules with the with the wall at the front and let that skater through. So the body snatchers, their 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 line is basically staying far back and not moving at all as that progresses. As long as the jammer can keep some forward momentum, it'll stretch to the point where they say, all right, now you have to let her go. Yep, yep. There's a distance required. Uh, oh, sorry, Kim I'm Bustable. watching the action. Yeah. I can't think about the, what Kim just Bustable happened. Kim Bustable down hard. <laughs> Meanwhile, Roland Marvel trying to follow her up there. And there she comes. We got bondage being put out there as a, on a major penalty. She's going to spend some time in the sin bin. So they're short-handed out there. The body snatchers are. Meanwhile, combustible looking to make some time. Jean Claude Hot Dam giving her a hip check. Actually, Hot Dam is going to the boxing and major. Going to pay for it, I guess. Yeah. Now, what's going on there? It seemed legal to me. It was outside the range. Well, let's take a look at the replay and see what that penalty got called. And we got, yeah, we got some uh, Roland Marvel here. Oh, this is here. the stretching out of the pack. Yep. So Roland keeps pushing. Meanwhile, her teammates, the body snatchers, are back at the other end, just hanging out, waiting for the string to break. But yeah, as you said, waiting for the string to break, and you can see that it's stretched out at that point in the replay. As we see that line of the white uh, jerseys back in the back, and uh, Roland Marvel pushing out the blockers on the other side. We got another little bit here of a break, uh, a little bit of a timeout uh, for a second here while the refs figure out what's going on. We're gonna be seeing um, we're gonna be seeing a couple of new jammers coming up here. And uh, um, uh, meanwhile, as we do, uh, it's uh, hot and heavy out. action here. Uh, <laughs> and there's a bear. There's actually a bear that's now loose on the track. End okay, coming on. up next. Here it goes. End game on. Back to the action as we <laughs> see, um, yeah, a couple of the Yukon uh, girls here in action and also the Wasilla girls, the Boomtown girls here coming up. We've got... Uh, is that Razor? I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing. Oh, no, that's that is. Chuckles. Yeah, that's Chuckles. And it is going up against. There we go. Scary Unightly is Scary jamming Unightly for the out first there. time tonight. Yeah, and I had not seen her out there yet. So, Scary, good to see Scary coming through. And she's coming through as. Is she the lead jammer? She's not the lead jammer. Meanwhile, Chuckles on the other end coming through. Also not lead jammer. So, what is that? How is that uh, Actually, happening? Actually, nope. Scary Unightly is, is lead, lead jammer. jammer. Okay, yep. Scary Unightly is lead when jammer. When in doubt, look at the jam refs. They yeah. will tell you what's going on. Scary gets through there and scores four points. Body snatchers have uh, caught up and then some in the scoring as they're up 84 to 76. About three minutes, Meanwhile, 30 seconds left in the first Wolfpack jam. Wolfpack also got four first. points there. It's going to be 84-84 as we see the action here fighting through that pack. And here she comes. She's coming through and trying to get in that lead there. Right there is where the lead happened, and Scary United oh, came in. Oh, very nice. Got in. You can see the ref putting his hand up and indicating that she is the lead jammer right that there. That was awesome replay. Back to live action. We've got Mayhem up against uh, the Wolf Pack. She is the Body Snatchers lead jammer, as declared by Rolling Apoc. And we've got Vertebraker back in the back of the pack. Looks like she's being forced to go all the way back. A lot of wall action recycling oh, through. Comes. Very there nice work goes. on Wolfpack's uh, blocking, slowing her down just a little bit. 
little bit, but she cuts through there, man, like a knife through butter. I mean, when she wants to get through that, she just does. It's amazing to watch her skate. Fertebreaker seems to have the uh, helmet panning not on. She may be looking to pass it on to somebody else, and that would be passing on to Kylie Wyote, who is the only person that can receive the helmet panty because she is the pivot for Wolfpack. Everybody else on the uh, body snatch is trying to prevent that pass to happen. But it has. And as soon as Coyote gets out of the pack, she's going to put that jammer panty on and head in for some scoring points. And here she comes. Rat City. Right? Yeah. Rat City talent now. Here well, she comes. Juno talent. Juno being. talent, but she's uh, already had her, she's had her uh, shirt retired. Yep. Her jersey has been retired, and here she is skating and scoring points for the Juno team for the Wolfpack, but has uh, has uh, just recently moved to Seattle. And there she goes, scoring some points as the Wolfpack is uh, now trying to maintain, uh, keep in touch there with the Body Snatchers. Body Snatchers there scoring some points as uh, the scoreboard is now showing them at 98 to 84, up by 14 points over the Wolfpack. We'll see if that score catches up here in just a moment. About one minute left in the first period of this game of season four. We've got Combustible and Mashup. Roll and Marvel coming up against each other here as the Jammers as we start off again here. And Combustible looking to break through quickly, but Roll and Marvel coming through. If she can maintain her feet, she might get ah, through as lead Jammer. Actually, she isn't does that, not. Uh, that's hot damn. That is hot damn. I'm sorry, my bad. And Combustible, though, is through. Combustible did come through there, but Hot Dam's right on her tail. She is. That's going to really determine this what strategy be... Combustible's got. Yeah, and... she called it quickly because Hot Dam was right there. And <laughs> that was expected. The Hot Dam breath <laughs> on her back, right on her neck, coming up there. Looks like we're going to have one more jam here with, with about 20 seconds left in this half. Looks like the refs will allow one more jam to happen here as the Wolfpack is 87 and Body Snatchers at 100 even. That looks like Hot Dam is going to stay on the jammer uh, line there for this last jam. And it's going to be Chuckles Norris going up uh, as the Boomtown Derby representative for the Wolfpack coming out here. And she's through first, Chuckles Norris. Coming through there. Oh, it is Roland and Hot Dammer. They're like twins. Yeah, that is Roland, right? I that know. I, that's why I thought before. But there's Roland out there coming through. <laughs> the Wolfpack scored two right there with Chuckles getting just two points. It's going to be 89 to 100 as we head into halftime here. Exciting again, once very, again, very, very exciting very, very action. Exciting. It was really exciting, I thought, too, as you were saying, to see these uh, girls who are skating from out of town come in, fit in well with the roster that's happening here, all these Juno Roller girls. I mean, I'm confusing Boomtown Derby Dame players for Juno players. That, I mean, for me, that's hard because I've known the Juno players for so long. I'm like, is it or isn't it? Yeah, so, <laughs> so. very impressive to see Chuckles, uh, Nora's out there, very impressive also. Um, very impressive, of course, the Juno Roller Girls that we hear so much of here, like April Mayhem and Combustible scoring well. Also want to mention the blockers who are being amazing out there, Just Julie for Catapult. one. Catapult and Fatty Duke laying yep. some hurt Very down there as well. Consistent play. So we've seen consistent play, a close uh, match here so far. A close, we're not, they're not called bouts anymore, they're called games now. That's right. The rules are still changing with roller derby. Well, we've got a really interesting thing coming up here. Once again, if you want to get involved, just text us, uh, hashtag at uh, AK Derby. Also, you can go to at 360north.org, check out all the action, hashtag that, or ask questions online. We're going to be talking to the folks are online here in just a second. But we're also going to be talking to some folks that uh, people got to talk to here. In the meantime, yeah. we had uh, uh, Shorty, Shorty Moreno got to talk to a couple of Juno Roller girls. We'll see that first. She'll talk to them. And then we'll see some out-of-towners that she'll be talking to in just a moment. And we'll, I'll take a break. You'll go up and chat with the uh, chat room folks. I'm and prowl around. I'm gonna we'll see come some, back for period two. We're going to go get some picnic baskets. Two great Juno Roller Girl skaters. I have Jean-Claude Haddam right here. How are you tonight? Great. And I have great Roland Marvel. How are you, Roland? I'm doing great. 
Great. So are you guys excited for tonight? Yes. Yes. Big yes. time. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I got some pictures here that you guys sent to us that you thought that were part of your life, I will say, right? And I want you to tell me a little more about what I just see. So the first one, Jean-Claude Hadem, you have your chest pumping outside of a helicopter. How cool is that? I'm a, a flight nurse for Guardian Flight and we fly to anywhere where a sick person is needed to go to a higher level of care. So we had just finished with a helicopter flight and we were just having fun. That's great. It's great that you can enjoy the, your, your job, right? Yep. Um, so the second one, you look fabulous. Where is that? Um, I was a model for wearable, wearable arts this last year, and the outfit that I'm wearing was made all out of pieces of glue. So I thought that was a cool picture to put in. That was a really fun thing to do. Great. I bet people really enjoyed it. Yeah. And the third picture, I see two beautiful cats. Tell me their names. Are they yours? All right. So I am the crazy cat lady, <laughs> um, kind of. Uh, I foster and adopt Sphinx cats, which it's a very rare breed. People um, get the cat and they don't realize how much care that they need. So I'm part of a national Sphinx rescue. And um, so those are the, currently the two that I have right now. Great. They look lovely. So for the people out there, um, you know, roller derby, derby names, they're always different. They're always really cool. So and there's always story behind. So what's your story behind your name and your number? Well, my, my real name is Jean. So one of my nurse friends named me Jean-Claude Hot Dam. And anybody that knows me knows that I have a pretty fiery attitude and a, I can be pretty spicy. Also, I'm Cajun French. So that adds to the spiciness. Great, and the number? Oh, my number. Um, 10's always been my number, you know, th sports through all my life. And um, the milligrams is because it's a dosage for medication and I'm a nurse, so 10 milligrams. Great, so Marvel, tell us about your name and your number and then we'll go into your pictures. Okay, so um, my name is Carolyn Marvel and I'm a, um, I, I love my, my last name is Marvel, it's my married, name and um, I was trying to think of a fun way to put something in front of it and when I was little um, I was really pudgy and it was kind of a family joke because I was wearing this t-shirt that all my family had and my name the C and the A were cut off so it was rolling and it kind of fit with roller derby so that's why and 13 is because throughout throughout high school um, and college that was the sport that was the number that I had for my sport when I played. Great so tell me about the pictures the first one looks like a playground yeah, I'm a special education teacher for the Juno School District and I have been for six years. So that's a big part of my life. So, and I love it. It's always fun. It's never boring. Great. And second picture looks like you are with another girl jumping up in the air in the middle of the forest. That's just me every day, just excited about nature. Um, no, actually, that's um, <laughs> when I went when I went camping with one of my friends, and that's the first person I met in Juneau because I'm originally from Michigan. So that was the first person I met. We've been teaching together for six years, so she's my best friend. So great. And how about the last picture with two other ladies? Those two other ladies are my sisters. So I have an older sister, Jessica, who's in Michigan, and I have a younger sister, Cassie, who's also in Michigan. So I love my sisters. Definitely very very close. Great. So you guys should tell me how do you jump roller derby? How long you've been doing this? Do you like it? Do you love it? Why? Um, I was at the very first practice for the Juno Roller Girls. I'm one of the founding members. Um, we're in our fourth season now, so I guess we've been actually skating for about five years. I've been roller skating since I could pretty much walk since I was three, I think. Um, and I've also played sports, so the combination of the two just has been amazing for me. And if I go too long without going to practice, my coworkers are like, go to practice. <laughs> because it's a great release for me. I have a very stressful job. Great, well that's great that Roller Derby can do that and that uh, you're happy doing it. How about you, Marvel? I joined two years ago and I did the intro to skate class, which was an awesome way to get started because I, I never roller skated until I did the class. So I did that for about six months and then I started joining the league. Well, I did the class for probably two months and then I joined the league and I was fresh meat, which was awesome. And then I um, was rostered for a team, which was super fun. And I've been skating ever since and I love it. It's great to meet different people that I wouldn't typically meet being a teacher 
teacher and it's also just a great way to release energy and to stay healthy and active. Great. Well, thank you guys very much for your time and we'll be back very shortly with two other great skaters. Grrr. All right, Shorty Moreno there. Thanks so much, Shorty. We appreciate you talking to those folks and we're going to get back to Shorty Moreno talking to uh, someone from uh, Yukon and also someone from Wasilla as part of, uh, a part of the next uh, segment though. But we wanted to talk to a couple of uh, folks here who are doing some of our online chatting, uh, answering questions and talking to folks on uh, Twitter and retweeting and stuff like that. Sarah, and hello T-Rex, how are you? I'm well, thank you. <laughs> and Sarah Yu, thanks so much for joining us. I am doing great as well. Yes, well good, I and mean, you're once again running all the online presence for us, checking yep. out what people are up to. What sort of uh, stuff are you hearing from folks? Just people happy to be watching Roller Derby on 360 North? Yep, it seems like people are definitely using the hashtag, being excited. Um, we just got a tweet from a guy saying that he took a break from watching football to actually you know, watching, you know, the derby bout right now or the derby game. So that's really, that's a triumph for us. I think. That's a pretty big moment to stop watching a, one of the a traditional sport to start watching uh, roller derby. So that's pretty good. And uh, T-Rex, how are you? You're a uh, jack-o'-lantern, I see. I am a jack-o'-lantern. I'm excited about tonight's game because we have a mixed bag of players from around Alaska here. So I think that that's kind of broadening uh, the connection that we have for tonight for this conversation so i'm stoked to be here <laughs> it's fun because you, you really feel like it's not just something happening in juno and not just something happening even in alaska but something that's happening all over the place as we have people down here from yukon as well are folks saying that they're tuning in from the yukon or from canada or from are there different places that you've seen people maybe being tuning in from well, it seems like, you know, people always tune in from to watch their own teams. And we actually, um, a while ago, we had our our, um, our bout retweeted by, like, Jacksonville or something in Florida, like their derby team. So it's pretty cool. It is like a very, you know, national or even global community. So it's Yeah, awesome. Derby Nation, right? Derby Nation out there all over the place. Really fun to see that stuff as well. Well, what are some of the things that you anticipate if someone were watching this and maybe might want to ask a question or might be confused about? What are some of the things you think that are mo some of the most common things that people might be confused about when they're watching Derby? Um, I still notice that there's a lot of rule clarification that needs to take place. And especially because every year as they refine the sport, they come out with a new rule set. And so there's a few changes. And so uh, if people haven't been up to date with the, with the new rule set, they might see those things happen in gameplay and they might be confused about them. And uh, I've brushed up on my reading and I've been playing on and off with the girls. So I'm ready to answer those questions if anything seems out of place. Okay, so one more time, give us the hashtag and the at to go to to make sure that questions are answered and that people can get everything, every derby question and all that stuff answered by a professional derby person right here. So you can either tweet at uh, hashtag AKDerby or you can go to 360north.org and also comment in the comment box. Either way, if you have a question, we can make sure that it gets answered. So Great, and to answer a couple of questions about what Derby Girls are doing outside of just Juno, Honey Badger and Battle Jacks can answer those questions for you. Here's Shorty Moreno talking to them before the bout. Hello, we're back here with two awesome skaters, but these are not Juno Roller Girl skaters, although they are playing with us tonight. We're really lucky to have uh, Honey Badger right here from Yukon Roller Girls. How are you? Hi, I'm great. And then we got Battle Jacks from Boomtown Derby Dames from Wasilla. How are you? Good. Great. So um, everybody wants to know their names, right? So we asked the other girls their names and why and the number. So how about you, Honey? Yeah, my name is Honey Badger and uh, my number is 780. So the Honey Badger comes from my last name, which is Badger. And I, it was my nickname through childhood and I always kind of liked it. Badgers are kind of mean animals and the Honey is kind of sweet and kind of sugary, but also pretty vicious, which I feel like suits roller derby and the nature of the sport. And my number 780 is the area code that I grew up with. So it's a throwback to my hometown. Great. So what about you, Battle Jacks? That sounds like a great name. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, my last name is Jackshaw. So in my 
past jobs, my nickname has always just been Jax. So I just kind of mushed it together with the battle axe theme. So battle Jax. And the number 1119, I used to be a cop. So it's uh, the code, number code for fight call or disturbance. So kind of fitting. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so Honey Badger, we got your awesome three pictures. So tell me about the first one. The first one is a picture of my teammate Bonanza, and there's a few of us in the background. And that was skating at the Canada Day Parade in Whitehorse. So that's to raise awareness and show that we support the team and support the community and let people know that we're around. That's great. So how about the second one? It looks very exciting. Is that you? Yeah, that's me skiing. Skiing is my favorite sport besides roller derby. I love it. I spend all summer wishing it was winter so I could ski and then I spend all winter skiing and loving every minute of it. That's great. And how about the third one? The third one is me having a ton of fun. I was with my boyfriend this summer in Haines and we enjoyed some nice weather and went for a hike up Mount Riley and I was just enjoying the view. Great. Okay, so Battle Jack, I got some really cool pictures of you two, and I want you to tell me what they are. Um, well, the first one is we do some fundraisers throughout the year, and that's a fundraiser my team and I did for Boys and Girls Club. They do a silent auction, so that was our one from last year. And then the next picture is, uh, my family kind of looks for any reason to have a party, so it was my brother-in-law's birthday party, so we went with the mustache theme, and those are my, those are my babies, Zach and Zoe. Um, and the last one, I'm kind of a homebody outside of roller derby. Um, I sit at home with my cats and I paint wine glasses. So these are some that I made for my sister's birthday recently. That's great. And I heard a rumor that says that you are just as awesome that you make one of those for almost each teammate on the groups that go play with your town. Is that right? Right. I made them for my own team and then they liked them so much they said, oh, you should do this for the next team that comes. So, so far, I think far north, North Pole and uh, Rage City have all gotten name wine glasses, so. That's great. I bet they are so excited <laughs> about it. I can't wait to go to your town yeah. <laughs> and get a cup. Definitely. So tell me, ladies, how long you've been doing this and why you love it so much or maybe how you join in. Yeah, I started skating in July of 2012, so just past two years, and I love it. It's a sport that I feel like embraces my body shape and my athleticism and it's a way to stay fit as an adult and it's fun. I love playing with women and working out and to stay fit and <laughs> it's just the best sport. Great, that's awesome. So how about you, Battle Jack? How long you been doing this? Um, I'm about three years now I've been skating. Um, I grew up, I love you know roller skating all the time and figure skating and um, I had a friend that kept pressuring me, you gotta come, you gotta come try this roller derby thing, and I never had time. And then when I left the police department, I finally was like, okay, you know, I'll go check it out. And uh, I got there and I was like, oh my God, look at all these women that are just like me. <laughs> I didn't know that there was a group like this that exists, and now I just, I love it. I go crazy when I can't skate. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you very much, guys, for your time, and the best of luck for both of you. I know you're both thank on the you. same team, right, tonight? Yes. We are, yeah, <laughs> Team White. Okay, well, body snatchers. I, body snatchers. <laughs> yeah, body snatchers. Okay, well, I think the team's got to look out because these are two great skaters. <laughs> so thank you so much and good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And that was a pretty good premonition there by Shorty Moreno as the body snatchers are slightly in the lead over the Wolfpack, 100 to 89 here as we uh, are just about to start the second half. Well. Sorry. Oh, I'm uh, barely containing no, myself. Oh, I know. It's just what are you gonna do? You know, it's just like uh, we're you know, we're here, we're we're watching the roller derby, and yet I'm a grizzly bear. So I don't know a what to do about bear that stuff. In Juno, ready for hibernation <laughs> while season four takes off. Ready to watch the second bears. half is what we're ready to watch. Yes. So what do you predict in the second half here now? It was interesting to watch. Wolfpack really got out to kind of a commanding lead, and then all of a sudden, Body Snatchers just started I, you know, really reining it in, got into their game plan, and really took it pedal to the metal. I mean, if you if you were to discount the first four jams of the first half, the, Wolf, the Body Snatchers would be way in the lead. Well, we can't. We cannot do that. We can't discount. Do so, that. you know, the score is the score, but what I would say is I think that Getting those first nervous jams out of the way, Body Snatchers adapted, mm -hmm. and they are ready to go. I agree. Couldn't agree more. I can barely contain myself. You're not alone. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I'm we, ready to see. And as uh, we've taken this moment to pause for the... <laughs> 
I'm stopped. That's the last one. Okay. I said I was. I said that was the last one at the intro. Now it's the last one. It's definitely right. the last one. But you know what's been exciting? It's exciting to watch the action happen. To watch these. Um, you know. Um, to watch the teams develop as not just oh we figured out these special strategies because we're teams, but they brought in this talent from Absolutely. outside. Absolutely, they bring in the talent from outside, and immediately that's the great thing about the roller derby that I watch is that you can play anywhere, and so to have the opportunity and and you know they come down and they immediately cohesively work to have the Boomtown Derby Dames and the Yukon Roller Girls who we've played or Juno Roller Girls has played UConn quite a few times, and then just to mesh immediately, and it's already evident that, I mean, the score differential in itself is showing that this is a good matchup, evenly placed in between the two of them, and working and not, really well. Not relying on any one jammer, uh, no. typically, you know, not, you know, everyone's kind of coming in, obviously you've got your stars, um, April Mayhem, Combustible, or people that we're used to calling their number a lot as we're, uh, as we're doing that's right, but about. Chuckles, she, that's a big surprise. I Chuckles mean, I hadn't seen in. her skate before, but I am i am can't wait to see her again in the yeah, second half. Absolutely. Well, we'll be seeing that as we go here in the second half. They're gonna they're lining up here in just a moment as the refs get us ready here. Here come the, the, uh, the skaters. Let's turn our attention over to the skaters as they line up for the first jam of the second half. In this, the season opener of season four here. It's a nightmare on Egan Street here in Juneau, Alaska from Centennial. Hall. Remember, if you want to be involved in this at all, just hashtag us at AK Derby as you post stuff online. You can also go to at 360North and uh, 360North.org. Ask some questions. We've got, as you saw in the halftime, we've got our social media manager uh, there, uh, Sarah Yu, checking stuff out. Also, T-Rex answering direct questions that people have, and it's exciting to get those questions nationally and internationally as this bout progresses. There's April Mayhem getting caught up right away in a bit of a melee at the front as she's caught up against this wall. And meanwhile, we've got Tim Bustable trying to bust through here. Mayhem is through, and she's lead jammer on this first jam of the second half. Kim Bustable immediately exit the pack. She is right on top of Mayhem, and the pack is set up for blocking Mayhem first with the Wolf Pack just stopping her right at the back. Kim Bustable squeezed them right through, but Mayhem called it off. No points either way. I think it's no points either way. The, the score still stands at 100 to 89 now with Wolfpack just 11 points behind the Body Snatchers who surged ahead to that lead after falling behind early in the first half. So we're heading into the second jam of the second half here as uh, Body Snatchers are looking to maintain their lead over the Wolfpack. Now I am going to, looks like Body Snatchers has hot damn as the jammer, but look who it is. We've got Grace, oh, Chuckles, Chuckles. I was just talking about Chuckles, and she is out and a lead jammer for Wolfpack. She's an impressive skater, and a, she's seen her a lot as a jammer. That would look like a trip of some sort yeah, there. Was a little skate Ma action. Yeah, I'm not saying it was intentional, but she essentially just tripped over a skate there. We'll see what happens here as a... Uh, we got a replay coming up on yeah, that. Yeah, as it looked to me like... Um, She's going onto the inside line. Roberta Bondage there. A little bit of blockage, but the blocking happened down at the skate level. That was bondage blockage there. <laughs> bondage blockage. We've all had a little bit of that in our life. If you haven't, you haven't lived. All right, coming up next is the next jam with Kim, Kim Bustable. Bustable going up against the, uh, the Jean-Claude Hot Damn Body Double. That would be Roland Marble. Uh, Roland Marble. And here we go. Oh, Kim Bustable with a great move against Kim Catapult there to get around on the inside. Sweet maneuvering from two great skaters. Well, Catapult, you know, she uh, assisted Roland Marble there, which like scooting those uh, Wolfpack skaters over just a little bit so she, Roland Marble can get through that pack. Meanwhile, Kim Bustable gets through as Kim Bus uh, as. Uh, as she calls the jam there. Catapult Kim tried to block her on that, but did not get to her. Great skating nope. there in that second jam. Two of the best Kims going That's up right. against each Kim other. Kim Bustable and Catapult Kim. All right, next jam coming up here in just a minute as we've got April Mayhem once again lining it up. And it looks like it's gonna be once again against Chuckles Norris. So, uh, it looks like we've got a Wolfpack blocking uh, group there of Kylie Wyote and Just Julie, along with uh, 
Looks like if I can see over there, it's a little tight over there in the pack. They're holding Mayhem back quite a bit. And that's actually, I think, Razor, Scared. not Chuckles Norris. I think I was wrong on that. That's Razor coming through. Yes, we have Razor as the uh, Wolf Pack jammer. She has. She gets forced to the outside. They don't call her though. Oh, and she gets a hit late on her there. Heavily by someone we saw, Battle Jacks, there at the halftime. I loved how Battle Jack said she couldn't believe there was a room full of women just like her. That's a fun thing. It was also telling to say, well, once I retired from the police force, I was like, okay. What a natural progression, yes. actually, to go right into roller <laughs> there derby. You go. Although I would have expected a, a, a maybe a ref, but you know, hey, smash all of those Toughened stereotypes. Up. Yeah, that's right. right. There she is, smashing oh, Razor. Battle Jack totally Speaking took of out smashing. Razor there. There was, oh, a real pile up there in the middle. Kylie went As down, Kylie covered. Kylie went down, and yeah. Other skaters had to hop up around. I mean, that's part of the athleticism of roller derby is things can happen super unexpectedly. And for a lot of reasons, they have to train for what happens when you fall. Hi, you know, cover yourself. What happens when you see somebody fall in front of you? Yeah. Be evasive. And uh, those bruises are worn as battle scars and bruises of pride. That's right. Uh, but you can see how they happen very easily here on this hard Looks wooden like floor that does not give. It was interesting. Mayhem went into the box there, but then she wasn't. So I'm not sure if she just went out of bounds and then came back in. We've got Razor back coming up to the back of the pack there. Once again, get in on the action by hashtagging us on Twitter or on Instagram. Hashtag, Hashtag AK Derby. Let's do that again. Hashtag, Hashtag AK Derby. Derby. Panty uh, switch. Now we have just Julie is jamming I for love that term. Wolfpack. I love to say panty switch. It's, you know, it's helmet cover, you know, if you want to be PC and <laughs> I, proper. Panty, panty switch is very PC to me. Here we go. We're going to look at what's going on here as a breakdown happens. There's Kylie going down and... A lot of action there, pushing yeah, her right so out of bounds. So that's kind of that game within a game that's happening with the blockers. You don't always see it, um, uh, uh, you know, you don't always see it happening as the jammers are coming through, but those blockers are positioning themselves to get the best hit possible on jammers right. as they're coming through. Here's Skatey Bright trying to hold up Fatty Duke. Fatty Duke is through. Skatey Bright, one of the most skilled blockers out there. She's uh, skating for the Wolf Pack in red. We've got Fatty, Fatty already back into the pack and up against all four blockers for the Wolf Pack, and, and she's, she's out. Five points. Meanwhile, Chuckles is right on her tail now and trying to block her out there. She oh, did get her outside. Jammer action. Well done, and Fatty Duke calls it right then. That was great. You can really see the determination on Chuckles there. She went right up to Fatty Duke, looked her right in the eye and said, I'm about to check you right out of bounds. Best kind is when you don't tell him. <laughs> there it comes, coming around here. And Fatty Duke fighting through that wall. Exciting action to see her fight through. She did get through. Meanwhile, on the inside, you can see, here comes Chuckles catching up to her. And right there, she sizes her up and out of bounds she goes. That's right. Very nice control by Chuckles to stay inbounds while taking out Fatty Duke. Coming back around now, here we go. We got Combustible and Jean-Claude. Hot damn. Uh, coming through. She's a crowd. She le definitely likes the crowd to work with her. She's uh, been a nurse for many years and now a mobile nurse, an air nurse. She's up there in those uh, airplanes that are uh, taking uh, patients out of in town. In the meantime, while we're, you know, she's up in the air, she's also on the track, and Kim Bustle, the uh, opposing jammer, is in the box, so she is on a power jam and using it best to her advantage, yeah, as started. well as, you know, following up those blockers on her team to let her get through. She already got five points. There's another five right there. That's ten points so far right now on this jam for Jean-Claude Hot Dam. And Body Snatchers looking to extend their lead here. She's coming back around through and trying to get through. Meanwhile, Combustible can do nothing to affect this. She's on the, she's in the sin bin. Now she's coming off the sin bin and can rejoin as there's been two passes. And that's it. She called another three. So that was a 23-point jam there. Wow. Uh, sorry, 13-point jam there for I the body say, snatchers. That's impressive. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, so, but, but 128 to 96 now with the uh, body snatchers really seizing pretty firm control of the lead so far. Again, 22 minutes left in this bout, so plenty of time left 
for the Wolfpack to catch up. But Bison is doing exactly what they need to do at this point. Yep, and it looks like they are calling a official timeout. That would be a, the officials are needing to powwow a little bit. They're coming through here. They're going to be talking to some of the coaches. They're asking what's going on. They're, there's a bit of a dispute here about either the score. Just Julie is coming in to talk to uh, them. We also got Peach Clobber off the bench there asking what's going on. Yep, you got T and Just Julie having a discussion Kim with uh, also there. Sorry, uh, Chicken Catapult Hawk. Kim. Catapult Kim also there. Yep, Catapult these would Kim also be known as the uh, captains and co-captains. Catapult for Kim this. talking to Chicken Hawk. Interesting to see them talking in a professional manner there, right? <laughs> They have a bit of a connection. They are married and have a child. It was the reason yes, why Chicken Cannibal Hawk Kim had to uh, be out some of last season. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the nine-month uh, illness. Kid's, that kid's gonna grow up. Uh, that kid's probably already on skates. He probably already has already, skates. Already on skates. All right. Coming up next, we got the next jam of the uh, game coming up. Once again. It's going to be Chuckles Norris, yeah, and uh, she's going up. Uh, Body and snatchers and are a little light on their blockers. They've got two in the sin bin. That means that Catapult Kim and Fatty Duke are uh, making sure that they are keeping back that wolf pack skater, but can only she's keep them back so far. That would be Chuckles. Through. Meanwhile, April Mayhem is the uh, jammer for the Body Snatchers. And she's having a hard time fighting through this wall this time. Yeah. Oh, and Just Julie blocking Fantastic her to the outside. Fantastic teamwork with Kylie Wyote, Just Julie, and Skatie Bright up there at the front of the pack. All right. I think they're putting their all into it this uh, first season game. This isn't just testing the water. This is oh, we're yeah. in all the way. You're starting to see the real effort happening here, as we see here, as we look back at this last play. Once again, uh, trying to hold Chuckles, back Chuckles, yeah. but she gets through and uh, is able to, it's hard, only two blockers there fighting against her, and Chuckle's able to get through that. Back to live action now here with the next jam of the game. 128 to 100 is the score. Body Snatchers in white leading Wolfpack in red. And we'll see if Wolfpack can make a come from behind here with 20 minutes to go in this entire oh. match. Blockers so have essentially stopped on the track. There's a little bit of blockage while a skater was down. So it looks like uh, We've got Battle Jacks heading to the box. She did a little bit of blocking while that skater was still down. Meanwhile, we got Just Julie trying her best to um, hold back Titan Young. Yeah, to hold back Titan Young there, but uh, did not uh, succeed in the long run there. I held her up for quite a while, and that's as much as you could kind of expect that to happen as Titan Young was fighting through in white. Titan Young actually came to Juno Roller Girls uh, maybe two seasons ago from Fairbanks. So oh, she right. was already a skater with Fairbanks Roller Girls, and now she is with Juno. And thank you. We appreciate having her here. <laughs> That's right. I've actually gotten to spend some time with both Titan Young and uh, Sailor Mouth, who has not uh, is not skating tonight. But I've spent some good time with them, and I'm enjoying being part of Derby. Meanwhile, the panty has been uh, passed off here to Bonanza Babe, and she's been coming around here. Got a lot of points there, raises her hands in victory. Have not seen her yet as a jammer. Looks like so APOC says she got two. Pretty exciting when uh, the people who are uh, typically blockers get to get out there, skate pretty fast, get around that track fast and hit the back of that wall and uh, beat jammers. They uh, get pretty excited about it. That was happening there with Bonanza Babe. Coming up next, we got uh, Kim Bustable once again going up against number 13 in white there. And uh, that is Marvel. Roland Marvel from the Juno Roller Girls. So two Juno Roller Girls out against each other. Kim Bustable, as she so often does, out quickly in front and coming around all ready for what her first of scoring runs. I think Kim Bustable has laser eyes for the for the uh, gap already, that she wants to hop through. Already through uh, two there and the. Uh, Roland Marvel, meanwhile, in the sin bin. So this is another uh, example here where exactly what the Wolfpack needed at this point. Kim Bustable can come through unadulterated to score some points. That's and right. that's what she does best. And she's through and does it right there. That's right. I mean, it, you can't depend on the opposing jammer to get a penalty. But the matchups that they've been putting together, I mean, definitely you've got Kim Bustable can capitalize absolutely when, they, when uh, Roland Marvel headed over there to the box. And she's taking care of business right now for the Wolfpack. 
combustible coming through again. And they're spreading out that, uh, Wolfpack is spreading out the wall there so that combustible can come through. That's right, Roland She's Marble a is ton back of points. in. I count 19 points so far in this jam alone. This is gonna be an equalizer jam right here as combustible comes through and calls it. Having yep. scored four more points, that's 23 points in yep. one jam. Roland Marvel came in from the uh, from the from the bin Look at and Kim's immediately determination got four here points. as she comes through. And that's those that's those laser eyes you were talking about. Ooh, she she looked through. Picks it boom, 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 boom. I'm in here. I'm in there. I'm gonna come around. You think you got me? You think you got me? You don't got me. I'm around through, and there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> that boom. was awesome. <laughs> And just in the open floor skating, and that's where she likes to be, getting that momentum and getting that skating going. Back to the live action here. We have Mayhem As for Body Snatchers. Some really effective blocking. The both oh, and Chuckles really carried some speed and power coming through, but it carries her to the outside as Catapult Kim takes her through, takes Chuckles. Norris there through on the outside. Meanwhile, April Mayhem once again declared lead jammer, and that's where she likes to be. I think she's going to attempt another pass through the pack right with Chuckles right behind her. And she does it. Exciting to watch her skate. Exciting to watch her get her I eyes on the open floor. I love watching all of these skaters, no doubt absolutely, about it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I definitely like watching the teamwork of the uh, Wolf Packs blockers. I mean, Kylie Wyote, Skatie Bright. They're just, they're amazing. And now Mayhem's just pushing them on like she's going grocery shopping. <laughs> filling up the I'll take this filling one, up the I'll cart. take this one. There That's she right. goes, and she calls it right there. All right, Body Snatchers, as soon as the Wolf Pack caught up, April Mayhem came out, Body Snatchers put some points on the board, 143 to 133. 10 points, that ain't nothing That's in nothing. roller derby. All right, as we saw in the last one with 23 points scored by one jammer. So we've got a 143-133 score on the board with about 16 minutes left in the entire match here. And we've got another jam lining up. And uh, so right now we've got uh, John claude a hot dam that's skating in white for the body snatchers. And it's going up against, I, I can't quite see his Razors or chuckles? Razors, it's Razor once it's again. Razors, Razor. And, yep. And so she's having to go back and match. They match. She matched up with John Claude Hot Dam as she tried to come through. Meanwhile, uh, Kim Bustable, uh, sorry, Catapult Kim kept her out. John Claude Hot Dam having to come all the way back around. Refs sorting it out, and here comes John Claude Hot Dam. Boom! Ooh, and laying it down on Skitty Bright. That's a back block. Major back block. That's sending back her to block. the box. And I, you know, Jean-Claude Hot Dam, that's a tendency. She gets so much momentum coming, so comes in so hot, often that uh, that black block, that uh, back block can happen Whoa, on her. Very nice block out to, uh, sorry. Goes. No, that's great action happening right <laughs> yep. there. Razor calling it after getting that big hit. Battle Jacks. Yeah. Battle yeah. Jacks is definitely something to contend with. Contend with. We're gonna Let's see, take a look at the yeah, replay. Yeah, Hot Dam here coming back, coming through. She had a lot of momentum as she was called back in. And here she comes just like a ball of fire. And that's a clear and back block right on Skatey Very Bright. clear. I mean, before, you know, if you're watching the replays and you watch the refs, you can immediately see that they're seeing the action right then and, and you calling can, it. And you can see Hot Dam's reaction to it. She quickly went right to the outside and yeah. knew she had been called. She's like, I was major. bad. I'm sorry. Yes. Here comes Combustible coming around through. And this yeah, is tough. Hot this Dam is in the Claude. box. Serving her time for that penalty. So it is a power jam for benefit Wolfpack. Or let's see if Wolfpack can capitalize on. Looks like they already are with Kimbustable coming through already on a scoring run. That's five points. They've already made up five points here. 142, 143 to score. They have one point differentiating themselves now. Jean-Claude Hot Dam back out of the sin bin now and back on the track. Still back to contend with that uh, Wolfpack wall. She has not come through yet on her scoring run. Combustible calls it, scoring another five points. Wolfpack has surged into the lead. By five. By four points. Four points. <laughs> That's a surge. 
That it can is. be a surge. Yes, it it's is. A, a little bit. It's yeah, a minor one surge. One time around the track surge. All right. It's I exactly see what they put. You know, this is a good point in the game. We've got about 13, se 13 minutes left. This is going to be the point where they're going to start really pushing those power jammers and those a really effective working team blocking so that they can either keep the score close or just keep it just ahead. So the strategy so here, obviously, if they get a situation where they're the only jammer, they're going to want to run up the score as much as they as can much at that as moment. But if there's both jammers on, you're saying the strategy might be just to keep the wall as solid as possible. The blockers, I mean, it becomes just try to a keep very it a low scoring affair as much game. as possible. Yep. Okay. We've got Chuckles for Wolfpack calling it off. And are we going to see some of that as well? Uh, some, some quick calling of yes, jams. Definitely. Nickel I mean, and diming it, as we've yeah, said before. I, a little bit of that nickel and diming it thing. Hit it and quit it. Hit for it and sure. quit it. All right. So it's um, it's 143 uh, to 150 right now. Wolfpack has, as I like to say, surged or maybe charged into the lead. As yes. uh, they've, they've uh, come back around, it's exactly what they need to do, as we said. That's right. Um, they got they got down by more than 20 points uh, here in this second half. We're back to live action now. Now they're ahead by six points. And, Kim and here Bustable comes Kim Bustable. Lead jammer yet again for Wolfpack. you got to say she's uh, the star of the match so far for Wolfpack. Yeah, uh, I mean she's say, whole, yeah, yeah no, I mean I'm always really one like it's a whole yeah. entire team game, but Kim Bosville is definitely the point scorer. You know me, I'm always looking for the star. <laughs> but you she cannot me. do like it without flash. her blockers. You know, I like the flash. I'm a garbage bear. <laughs> That's okay. I go by I like that. I like that. So I go for the Twinkies. Yes. I love them. I go I've, for avoiding been, the uh, piles. I've been in the baited. Yard. I've been baited. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Let's check this replay. out here. Yeah, we got this, uh, you know, that was a pretty hard hit here and went down hard as uh, coming around here, combustible and down. Oh, yeah, she just kind of lost an edge hits. in a way there. She got a hit, and as she tried to come around on the inside there, now what has to happen there? She has to come around and get outside so that she's not gaining track position on the out on the outside. So she came around and called it immediately. I think she was also getting out of the track there for some safety to get yeah. back up. I'm not Yeah, you know, I don't want to get rolled over while you're out there. So they are currently in an official, t uh, I'm sorry, a team timeout for Body Snatchers. Body Snatchers has called a team timeout. And as someone who's coached teams, as someone mm -hmm. who's been on these teams, what's happening in these team timeouts? What are you trying to get? Are you, are you talking strategy or are you talking more about sort of yeah, I mean, at this in point game? in the game, the body snatchers are just 10 points behind. I think they're just recentering. I mean, why not use that time when you can use it? And it might be just a little bit of, you know, um, a little bit of serenity talk. You think or that's it, what's could, happening? it could be, or it could be, hey, we're going to switch this up and we want to see you doing this now. Let's go. Do you think they might be game saying, on. let's do this play, this play, or this play? You think they might be actually setting some very specific match strategy? You know, just looking over at what the bench is doing, it looks like they were just huddling up and doing, you know, some good centering. And and it could be that. It could be, hey, I'm done jamming. But I highly doubt that. I think they want to finish this strong. Oh, yeah. They're going to finish it strong. Here it comes. They've been in the lead for quite a bit of this uh, entire bout. Now it's 143, 153. Still anyone's. Yep. Absolutely. It could be decided by one or two jams here very easily. Yep. Wolf it could be this out. jam. I mean, the way and that Roland Marvel just popped out of the front of that pack and we're ready to go. Maybe that timeout was exactly what they needed. And she came out like a ball of fire. Here right, she goes, chuckles. coming around, getting wide on this next approach to the wall. Coming through, she got turned around, and she calls it, getting Before just a couple chuckles of points. Even got she got in one there. point, one point. So she got one point. There you go. There are nine points down. That's uh, right, one point. Interesting to me, though, in a way. She was coming out so strong. It's interesting to me that she wouldn't try to press that advantage a little bit, see how it could go. You know, it That's could have been the trajectory that she was going on around that corner. She knew she wasn't going to keep control, or it was that's the strategy that they have: is hit it, quit it. One point, one point gain. We got enough time. Let's close out this gap. Just under 11 minutes to go here in this game, and uh, we're heading into the next jam with Kim Bustable in there, and uh, also I think Catabol Kim is in there as one of the jammers. Catapult Kim is one of the jammers. Kim Bustable on the outside, and there she goes. She fights back around. She's lead jammer now. And now, uh, really, she faked to the inside and went to the outside. Did, yep. That was a sweet move. 
Catapult is, uh, you know, definitely a steady roster jammer. I mean, as she's coming in, I know that she did some refing last year, but she's coming back in. It looks like she's making a really good season four debut return. I mean, I think the thing, I, I, I love watching Catapult Kim's lines that she cuts as she's jamming. She, she has a very nice, sharp cut. Yeah. On, it's an, it's she a, just lets her knee lead the way. So here we go, coming back around, and Kim is coming in through here on the start here. She's coming back around. This is Kim Bustable. Now watch this fake. She's going up against yep, the fake on the end. It. And then outside, and there you go. I mean, anybody watching these replays that was going to eventually maybe be playing against her might be using hey, this for some study you material. Watch, you watch it. You study. I know I'm studying it. Got the All next right. jam on. Right in the right to start with. There she goes. Chuckles Norris is right out in front. And you got look at April Mayhem running. Just running. Yeah, she's closing that gap. Skates up off the ground, coming in hot here. And, and on right the, inside, the inside, and there she goes. Overtakes Chuckles Norris for sure. Boy, that wall just seemed to open up for her on the inside there as she came around. It was just a pretty fortuitous and well, also we do have incredibly strong skating by April Mayhem. Great first strong skating coming out of the box there. And look at the score shift differential now. And there we go. It's uh, just a six-point game now. Body Snatchers now down 152. Wolfpack up 158. And that's what anybody's we got going game. on here. Anybody's match here. Anybody's game. Anybody's bout. I love the word bout. I'm going to continue saying bout. Okay. I'm a bear. What do I know? <laughs> what do I know? I'm a bear. Rawr. All right, here's Combustible fighting back once again right on again, the inside. There the you go. Before I tell you something. Before the skaters even got past the pivot line, Combustible has already declared lead jammer. It's just it's kind of, it's like watching it's like Michael Jordan or so. Oh, he jammed again. Oh, another dunk. I mean, yep. she just comes on the inside. She calls gets it. Gets it quick and she calls it on her back. She fell over on her back and called the Catapult jam. Catapult didn't quite get up to the pack for a scoring pass. So, you know, I think Combustible is like let's just call it right here. And Got one going. point there for the Wolfpack, 159-152 now the score. Eight minutes left in this entire game. And uh, as oh, we're and now we here, have a little bit of a dance party. A uh, little bit of a dance. I think because little John came down. That's Turned right. down for what? I think they're already looking uh, past this period and on to the after party. The Grizzlies, sure. they love the, the Grizzly Bears, they love this song. Oh. So we've got, uh, who do we got here? Is that Roland Marvel? Popping around there behind that wall of red. That's Roland Marvel doing that. That's her style. She likes that quick hop. And uh, meanwhile, oh, oh very nice, nice move there Almost. by Jump of Norris. Battle Jacks into the wall. She missed. Oh. And it was fantastic. That was an amazing shot. It rocked our rocked our table here a little bit in the broadcast booth. Very exciting stuff happening there. Scary Unitely is really laying down some hits on Chuckles, meanwhile, though. Yep, we've got Battle Jacks. And Battle Jacks has a little bit of a score to up. settle there. And center on the outside. Center on the outside. Battle Jacks said, yeah, Mayhem nice one. Is, nice play. Uh, Don't looks like Mayhem's again. in the sin bin. She's a blocker for this uh, jam for Body Snatchers. Chuckles had it around almost. She had to come around. And the bounce call. Boy, that was an exciting hit there. And, Jam is and called. Almost Bro, hit I'm, I was pretty by Battle. impressed. Let's check out what's happening here with Battle Jacks. So here, here she comes around. Battle Jacks is a little bit on the inside. And she and we're going to see just a sweep. Here we go. Coming we're going to have her attempt going in and then just a sweep back out. Oh. Well, we missed it. It was right underneath. Oh, it was right underneath there us. There we go. No, right here. A miss. And around. And there you go. All right. Got the next jam going on. We have Razor now for Wolfpack. Razor has been relentless. She's going and going and going. She's energized She's her sharp. bunny out there. She's kind of sharp. Yeah, yeah. And here comes Catapult Kim in the open track, and that's where she can really do some work. Look at the speed that she gets, and look how smooth she skates. Coming in Just wide. Coming. Around, outside, inside. And Forced out, out great bounds. block by Skatey Bright. Skatey nice. Bright doing great work there. They Catapult back Kim. In this they're back in this jam pack up. Catapult Kim had nothing but great momentum and Skatey Bright stopped her in her tracks, a great block. All right, here comes Catapult Kim coming back around. 
And now here's the skill, here's the speed. And now she's out there. She's got five on that one. Razor is still working that wall there at the back of the pack. And heading off to the box. Oh, she's off. Here comes Catabol Kim. And through. And oh, putting, and uh, just putting the wolf pack quite light on the track. They've got only two on there. Only two on the track right now. Catapult Kim Catapult. trying to come around. Couch doing a great She's job. Going backwards, Catapult Kim going, going around backwards and gets five points and calls it. Wow. So Catapult Kim doing damage, doing work on that last one with body snatchers now surging into the lead. Five points. There she goes so wide on that stance. Comes Take a look around. At this replay. Outside, inside. Now skating bright. Don't you come in right here. Out. Almost took out a rep. That would have been an extra <laughs> point. Not really. And Skady Bryce just like, it's all business. I'm getting back to my spot. No big deal. All right. Wow, great to see that action happening. Very, I love seeing very Catapult fun. Kim skate and jam, and I love seeing Skady Bright block. Yes. I love it. Here we, we go. Another we, got another, we got another little bit of action happening here. Check this out. Here's Catapult Kim coming around. Oh, Outside. that would be, uh, is that Couch? That's Couch taking uh, Catapult out of the out of bounds there. So, so, so what's happening when they go out of bounds and they have to run, they have to, the segments, the lines you see in the track are actually yeah. segments they have to use. Well, not them. That's actually just a reference point. These white lines are just a reference point for refs. But what they have to do is if a skater is knocked out by an opposing skater and that skater starts backing up, they cannot cut that tra and go back onto the track. So they have to yield to the skater that is still in bounds to get back on the track. So that's why you're seeing when they get knocked out of bounds, they're running back around, back. Well, especially so they if, have not you know, gained track advantage on the outside. That's right. If Battle Jacks or Couch or any of those guys back up, back up, back up, then to get back in, you have to get behind that skater. Here you see April Mayhem now coming around, and once again, she's got open track in front of her so fast. Appears that we have a power jam just, at the moment right there in front look of her. Look how she cuts through the wall. I mean, it's just amazing to me. Every single time she comes up, the wall's set, they're ready to take her, and then she just dances around it, inside, outside, it doesn't matter. We have matter. a panty to or a helmet cover toss to Combustible, and she is now the jammer. You don't have to say helmet cover. <laughs> you can say panty. Panty top. That's panty what it is. That's pass. official roller derby language. That's right. And this jam has been called. Let's see that panty toss in slow motion, shall we? I'd love to see this. So it looks like she took. Oh, very smooth. There it took is. Took it right off. Tossed it right forward. She. Looks nice. like she caught it, and she is off. And she's at the front of the pack, so I mean, that's the initial that's, pass. That's that advantage that you can get by doing that strategy. That's right. All I mean, right. this has been this. I mean, even just the first game of the season four, I have seen more strategy, cover, more, more panty interesting tosses. things yes. happening. Yep, that's this, right. This really bodes well for my fan aspect of this game. Chuckles Norris now out in front for the Wolf Pack. Here she comes around as lead jammer. Very, very well done. Fatty Duke, Scary sorry, Knightley. Scary Knightley. And she gets blocked out. Scary Knightley was coming around a certain time in the sin bin, That's and right. Chuckles Norris got Scary forced out to the outside and hit her inadvertent. Now the, the ref is sending her all the way back on that track now to come back around. Cut on the inside, has to go back around. You watch Rolling this Apocalypse is a, there is the ref that's tracking her right now. Yep, she, uh, Rolling Apoc is the uh, Wolfpack Jam ref. We have Scary Unitely who's jamming for Body Snatchers this, uh, in the sin bin. There's some penalties being pulled here in the last few minutes of this game. Yeah, la there's only three minutes left in the entire bout here, and we're uh, getting down to where you can really hear the voice level going up. Oh, yeah. You can hear the intensity going up. You can see it going up. As we can see here, as she's coming around here, and this she approaches. This is yeah, where she Sarah hits boom goes, and oh. in. And they're down. And that can happen. And then almost hit our cameraman right there. He's okay, though. Don't worry. He's fine. Yep. And then Just back a little around. Shaky. There we go. Everything's okay. All right. We're back to live action now as we head back into what might be one of the last jams of this entire bout here. That's right. And Kim Bustable is on it. 
176 to 162 with the body snatchers in white ahead of Wolfpack in red. Scara is back in uh, from the penalty box. She is fighting against a very solid Wolfpack wall. They are not letting her go. Kim Bustable trying to come around. There she goes on the inside in the middle. Great pass there. She got five points for that pass, so here we go. It's one Another helmet cover pass from Scare Unitely to Catapult Kim. She's but, gonna oh, get that helmet cover on. But what a jump there across the arc that Kim Bustable did on the inside. Beautiful move on the inside. Oh, took the full Both brunt of that jammers. hit. Took the full brunt of that hit. There you go. Bustable looks a little, uh, little Titan. busted down there. I think Titan maybe got a got a full impact from Titan there. And we'll see how this uh, looks here. He, she's coming around. A lot of determination. Let's see how this works. On the inside, sweet, sweet little jump on the inside. Thought they had the inside corner covered, but did not as Kim Bustable came through. All right, it's 178 to 172. 30 seconds left. This is going to be the last jam, and anyone could win this one. Uh, we'll we have behind won. by only we, six. Team Other has won. That is us. <laughs> here we go. We'll they play harder. Go. April Reed. Very nice April last jam. April Mayhem has made it through as the lead jammer first, and that might mean that Body Snatchers have it in the hand. Oh, there's just, they're going to just here. hang out and uh, do a little action, jammer on jammer action. They're just playing around there, uh, Chuckles and Mayhem. They're just gonna block there. Let the they're gonna take some jamming blocking at the same time just for this last jam. All right, so Chuckles trying to get around, trying to get around, but cannot. And just Julie just took out uh, Mayhem there for a second and let some scores go over there for the Wolf Pack. What's it gonna be? Here we go. No. This no, is kind of a nail biter. Yeah. Here no at the scoring end. yet has done. Scores. Now there's zero time left in the bout, but there's still a minute left in the jam. So That's the right. bout is going to be over when this jam is over. When it's, it's called really or when it times out, the table. it's over. You would think. And that would be Mayhem, Mayhem for Body Snatchers four. for four points. They're going to play it out here. Here it goes. And Just Julie is grabbing the panty and fighting through. And Mayhem is here. Oh, the back she of can't the get the panty against. on. Trying to get the panty on and trying to fight through here. Body Snatchers are up by 10 points here. And here comes Just Julie. Has fought through on the inside. Well, I'm watching Four Mayhem points in for the just pack. Julie. Four points for just Julie, meanwhile. And she calls it, and that's going to be the bout right there. That is game. With the body snatchers in white. Very Finally nice. overcoming and getting ahead of the Wolfpack. Body Snatchers went out to the early lead. Oh, Wolfpack went out to the early lead. That's right. Body Snatchers caught him. Body Snatchers in the middle of the second half had it. Wolfpack came back and now Body Snatchers back at the end. And I 185 think it was that to 178 team is what it ended up being. Team timeout that they called here in the last period and whatever they did in there, it switched it up for them. We were wondering what was happening there. They took a moment. They did their own. They it had a little been strategy. That. They, I think, as you said, they kind of did a little bit of a back and forth. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at that last replay here. there. There's a lot of replays happening. They're just hanging out right back here, just seeing what kind of action that the jammers, because, you know, the jammers just go, 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 but this time they get to play. April, April Mayhem really taking it to her here as they come back around, go through. Exciting stuff happening there. I am happy. This is a great <laughs> end or a great start to our winter season of Juno Roller Girls. Thank you so much to Boomtown Derby Dames players. Thank you so much to Juno uh, to uh, Yukon Roller Girls. We're getting waves down here. <laughs> bear paw, high paw, high paw, high paw. <laughs> it's the bear suit. It's, it's the bear suit. It's the scent of the bear suit. <laughs> it's the bear suit for sure. All right. Thank well. you. So it's an exciting match, an amazing beginning of the next season of Juno Roller Girls and Roller Derby action Let's do happening this. in general here in Alaska. So fun to be with you. I'm in decline. Money, Money honey. honey, for the entire 360 North crew. Thanks so much for joining in online at uh, 360north.org. Thanks for watching. Ha ha uh, hashtagging us at AK Derby. Derby. And uh, we appreciate everyone's participation. Appreciate everyone who's a participated here as well. The entire 360 North crew. 
And I'm in decline for the entire 360 North crew and for Money Honey. I'm calling Adele. We're going to be out for the night. Money Honey says good night. Happy Halloween. <laughs>